kids. Get your popcorn now. What the rock and fuck sex drugs and rock and roll is up, internets. It's Mr. Royal with a raw reaction review, spoiler free, of Thor, Love, and Thunder. What's going on, Mr. Godfrey? Huh? Exactly. Taka Wakiti. He did the one thing that most Marvel films have never accomplished. And what's that? He made a film that if you've never seen a Marvel film before after this, you can enjoy a standalone film. There's been a, a, a shit ton of Marvel movies and a shit ton of Marvel directors. I'm calling out this director. I didn't say anything about the 22 films before this or anything like that. I, Taka Waikiti at this point for me, Marvel-wise, is two for two. This movie here, god damn. God damn. I don't think you know how big this was. Marvel, a few years ago, had reached Kardashian sex tape level. It was like, oh my gosh, is this out here? Oh my gosh. And then, just when they thought they had everybody, they decided to start putting out the Eternals. So we got Thor, Love and Thunder. This is Chris Hemsworth, fourth installment. He breaks the record as the most solo films in, in Marvel. And I mean, true solo films. Natalie Portman, Taka Waikiti, Batista coming back as Drax. We got Chris Pratt, low key, low key, Matt motherfucking Damon was one of the first live action characters to play Loki in the film Dogma. So there's your Marvel and DCU connection. Before they made these separate universes, these universes were merged. There was Marvel and there was DC in the film Dogma. You had Matt Damon and Ben Affleck playing separate characters. Ben Affleck, of course, played Batman and, unfortunately, Daredevil. And then, of course, uh, Matt Damon, of course, played Loki. Now, what's funny about that and interesting moving forward is that Matt Damon, in the first Takawakiti installment, of, of Thor Ragnarok play when there's a play going on, no pun on words, he plays a Loki in that. I'll just say this, there's no spoiler alerts here. There's one part in the movie where something bad happens. Oh my God, spoiler alert, something bad happens. And then Matt Damon's character, who's a true thespian, in his greatest Edward Norton moment in his life, something bad just happened, like horrible. He walks up to the king of Asgard and says, hey, really quick, do you think we can use this as the next play, like an inspiration? The king looks at Matt Damon like, and so the king walks away, Matt Damon's like, so we're doing it. Dark Knight, everything happened. And so it was like, it pay, and, and he's, but he's not in Loki character when he does it. Yeah. He's in, no, he's in Matt Damon form, form with the fucking actor glasses. He's like, we're doing it. So all right, let's get past that. I had to do that for you. That's the connection. Not to mention that, of course, EV slash Eve, who in V for Vendetta, Matt, Natalie Portman, was in a movie called V for Vendetta with Hugo Weaving, who plays the Red Skull in Captain America. So we just want to throw that out there. We'd like to do a lot of connections. Let's get into the goddamn movie. Dave, cut that for me later. Appreciate it. Love him. So with that being said, guys, this movie is a fun fucking ride. One thing about a Taka Waikiti film is that it's not only that he, you, it's, I, I, I liken it to a, an elongated Ferris wheel or a theme park ride. And what I mean by that, it's meant to excite you, but it, it's not a slow burn. It's a just right burn. Like it's all through the ride, you feel good about, good about it from the beginning to the end. There are two goats in this film <laughs> that fucking blow my mind every time they're on screen. Oh, screen time, they're on screen for a probably about 18 seconds total. But each segment that they're on there is like, <laughs> oh man, that fits perfectly right there. It never gets old. It's like a running gag that never gets old. That's beautiful. Natalie Portman, who plays the female Thor. For most of my people watching this, no, this is not a Marvel decided, let's throw a female character in there so we can get more females involved. This was done from the comic books. This has been around for three, four decades. No, female Thor has been there. I love Russell Crowe being Zeus. Let me tell you why. Because it shows that even the most talented actors get work when they get flabby and old. And what I mean by that is, you got a motherfucking guy. He was. He, this is the first time he came. You talk about Danny DeVito coming back to TV after Taxi with Always Sunny. This guy just came back to the stadium. Last time he was in the stadium, he was Maxis Aurelius. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Are you are you not entertained? Not anymore. I mean, I mean, acting wise, I am. But physique wise, I, fuck no. It's a fat. It's fat Mac. It is fat Zeus. It is. Maximus, Maximus Aurelius visits rallies or fucking checkers. I love it though because like he went from Maximus Aurelius to fucking Superman's dad to Zeus, and you're getting fatter and bigger. God damn it! What contract did you sign? Who's your fucking agent? Christian Bell. I I did a segment on this about 48 hours ago where I said I was really intrigued when Christian Bell was signed into the MCU because of uh I know how hard he really 
as a thespian wants to portray that character and wants to be the best. What I really loved about this is that they didn't waste this. I don't know if it's the first time it's been done, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere between one and three to where they've showed, at least this long, an intro before they showed the opening Marvel theme song slash credits. And I'll tell you this, I effing loved it. I'm going to tell you why. It's the exact opposite of why I... I, I hated the Eternals. I didn't hate the movie, the Eternals. I hated that they threw them into this at the end game. End game ended on characters that we grew up with as kids that everybody loved, all these stories being connected. Bam, bam, bam. We love it. Then you bring us the Eternals. Look, dude, I'm a film fan. I'm a comic book fan. I'm a cartoon fan. I knew nothing, 0% about the Eternals. I still went to watch it in IMAX. And my point to you is saying is that is this. Christian Bale, I'm pretty, we both agree that it was probably in his contract. If I'm coming in, I need something by myself. But the first 10 minutes of Thor, Love and Thunder was done beautifully because guess what they did? Let me get this new character that nobody knows the fuck about out the way for 10 minutes. I know the movie's called Thor, Love and Thunder. The first 10 minutes is Christian Bale's intro into the MCU. And then... We get into the fucking story. because, But you know why? You know why that's beautiful? Because for the next hour and 50 minutes, I'm not asking, who is this guy? Why should I care about him? Why do I know him? And that's the beautiful thing about Taka Waikiti. All throughout the movie, that's why I told you at the beginning of this, he made us a standalone movie. You didn't have to see anything before or after this to say, I enjoy this movie. But I'll say this. I, for Tessa Thompson, I love you. I uh, respect you. If we're ever on that date and we're sitting there laughing about how this all started, this is that moment. All right, going forward. Now, with that, keep that in there. Now, with that being said, uh, I want to say this. Like I say, I got to see... I got to see Groot. This is why I got Groot, that little baby Groot out here right now. He's grown now. He's growing up. Oh got a lot God. of sap on that tree. That, he's Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I just said they were in the first phase. They're in the first phase of the film. Because I, I, okay. I'll that, tell you I'm why. Thor is from where? Do you know where Thor is from? Ragnarok. Asgard. Okay. <laughs> right? The fucked up part about it is the one word you said is the one thing that killed Asgard. It was Asgard. Ragnarok. You said the one word you should have never said. You, Jesus Christ. So no, he's from Asgard. And so at the end of Endgame, he left with the Guardians of the Galaxy and they start calling themselves the Asgardians of the Galaxy. Which is hilarious. I really want to say this movie, like I say, from beginning to end is fun. And you get a, most people, I'm not, not a spoiler alert, but you get a little Shazam feel to it. It's a fun fucking film, man. You could tell his... Again, Taka Waikiti at this point is about seven for seven for me, from independent films to films he's produced and starred in or uh, co-starred uh, co in to films he's directed. And I'm not saying he can't do any wrong. I'm pretty sure one day he make a fucked up film. All directors eventually make a fucked up film that they learn from or start with. But I will say this, Thor Love and Thunder, man, um, it does not disappoint. I'm probably going to go back and see it again in theaters because I had three people next to me. I'm not going to get started on that. I just Let's just say you are almost hosting this show by yourself. So, but guys, before we get out of here again, I've, I've given you no spoilers. I'll just say this. Stay for both, both post scenes and shout out to, I'm not going to say, shout out to Marvel for being a little bit more inclusive on this one. You fucked us up with Fastos and uh, Eternals giving your first uh, gay character, making them black. And the reason why I say that is, I don't care what color this fucker was. I don't care about people being gay. That's fine. Do what you want to do. But it was a little ironic that black people have to fight for a lot of screen time. And you decided to make the first openly gay person in Marvel Amen. history. That's what we call two birds, one stone. As is what they call that. Yeah. Whatever Ravens must be because they were black. And with that being said, I do want to say shout out to y'all be inclusive on this one. Y'all brought a storyline into this that I didn't think was forced. When you bring certain story, and I'm not going to spoil on this, when you bring certain storylines in and they're brought in like, oh, okay, I can see how y'all, oh, okay. And that, and that all comes from Taka Waikiti. There were several storylines in here that didn't go with the status quo, but they didn't overshadow the story. So Taka Waikiti, I know you're going to go see, you're going to, you're going to see this. We came to see you. You come see us. I mean, look the fuck we put on. I, I'm rocking out. What you got on over there? I don't know, man. All right. With that being said, guys, Thor, love and thunder. Die.